Hey folks, welcome back to another video. The sampler of Bitwig Studio unfortunately doesn't feature a slicing mode, you know, where you can drag in a drum loop or a percussion loop, detect all the transients, create slices from that, and then map out these slices onto the MIDI keyboard. So that's not part of the sampler, and I don't know why they included one yet um, when they revamped the sampler a few years back. They haven't actually included the, uh, a slicer into the sampler. I don't know why. In my opinion, uh, Bitwig is a highly dynamic instrument, so it needs to feature at least um, a slicer where you can drag in samples on the fly and map it onto the keyboard pretty easily and fast. So um, I had this idea, maybe let's create one actually inside of the grid. And that's exactly what I did. And it looks like this. Uh, what you can see on the background. And unfortunately, I can't show you how to build this from scratch in a video. It would take too long and um, not like building all these uh, things here, these building blocks, but may more like tweaking everything so it works nicely. It's more like finding the right sweet spots, debugging stuff and so on. So this is how it looks like. Um, we have here in the middle the sampler. Um, as a module inside of the grid, and there's a drum loop in there. It sounds like this. Right, so just a normal drum loop with kick, snare, hi-hats, and so on, and a bit of, bit of percussion. So we want to map this now onto the MIDI keyboards, right? So I have here created a transient detector, uh, where we detect all the transients, and create position signals from that, store that into an array, and then um, we can recall these settings from the array and map this onto the keyboard. So what you, what you do usually here is you load in a sample, a drum loop like this, and then you hit the scan button here, right? And then I scan through the sample, and you can see it down here, we detect basically all the transients with the transient detector. And every time we detect one transient, we trigger basically here the transient store and store the position of the playback playhead in the sampler here. And now what I have, if I use this button, I switch to keys and now I can play on my keyboard. Actually, let me show you my keyboard down here. Um, so we have C3, right? That's the first sample or the first slice and D sharp or C sharp is the second one. Right, so you can play basically all these detected slices um, in the sampler just with the keyboard. You can also trigger this here. Or you can uh, switch the keys off. So now you basically use the sample knob here or the sample slice knob so we can scan through all the detected um, slices here, right? Um, what you also can do is you can change the pitch, of course, from everything. And I use here the loop mode, so we can also just loop this. Right, you can do stuff like this. So it works like you would use a slicing feature in any other slicing um, sampler ever. So um, I tried to do this. I also try to explain everything here with a lot of text, how this stuff works. Um, it's not actually that complicated from in, in theory, but I needed to make here a lot of conversions sometimes. Um, it's probably or you can make this patch maybe even simpler um, because I'm using here uh, not the normalizing feature of the array. I switched this off because I wanted to have integers for the in index. So I basically the first slice has the index one, the second slice has index two and so on. So I need to make some conversions here, right, for the key mapping. So here, if you use the keys or the pitch input from the keyboard, um, C3 is zero and C sharp is 0 0.013 or something like that. 
right? So I needed here to mu multiply this um, these values to get an integer. So C is zero and uh, C sharp is one, D is two. And then I use these numbers basically to recall uh, here the positions from these arrays. Um, it's maybe interesting also to look at the transit detector, how I try to solve this problem here. I basically just use an uh, envelope follower, which is rectified and lacked uh, amplitude here from, from an audio signal. And then I delay the signal and then I subtract the delayed signal from the original signal. And it gives you, as you can see here, pretty nice um, um, indications where a transient occurs, where you basically have a drastic volume change, where the volume ramps up pretty fast. So with this, you get this pretty easy. You can also try to play around with the false setting and the delay setting to see how it influences the transient detection. Because if you go down here you know, with these values, you detect more, more things inside of the uh, sampler. Uh, you can also try to include here maybe filters. So let's say bandpass filters if you want to exclude, for instance, hi-hat sounds or noise clicks and stuff like this. So you can filter the sound before you go into the follower here and then try to use that for the sample detection or for the transient detection. Um, then there's also something like the transient store. Um, I'm store, storing basically the position here of the playhead. I go or scan through the sample and every time I detect something here, I just push the position of this into the array, right? So we find something here, the detector says, hey, there's a transient. So the, I'm pushing basically this position into the array. And I push this not only in this array, also in this one here, but then for the index, I just add one. And um, that's basically my simple solution to find the start and the end point. Because now when I recall a position, basically with the index, let's say I want to recall slice two, which is here, I basically take the integer of two. Uh, so I get the position from this array for, the, for, this, for this position here, right? But I also get the, the next slice, the beginning of the next slice, which is this one. And this I get from this second array here because I just add a constant or the index to the, uh, to, uh, just add one to the index, right? So I always get the first position here of that and the position of the second array at the same time. So I use this basically as a starting point here of the start play playhead and this at the end position, which is the beginning of the next slide. Um, but then, um, inside of the sampler, you don't have a start position and the end position. You have a start position and then you have the length of the loop. Um, so this was kind of a problem. So I needed to calculate here the loop length in percentage. Uh, so you can do this here by just subtracting basically the start point from the end point and it gives you basically the loop length and yeah, per percentage. And you can see it works quite well here. Um, for certain things here, the loop length, length basically changes to the next slice, right? Um, so this was kind of a problem. You don't have, like I said, you don't have a starting point and an end point. You have a start point and the loop length, which is, yeah. I tried to solve this here with this kind of uh, patching and it works quite well. And then start point, end point is here uh, solved by just um, using the same the same inputs, just adding here one to the index. So I have basically in, for the same index, the start point and the end point. Actually a simple solution, just offsetting the index. Um, the scan process itself is just here an envelope that I trigger and then it creates a ramp signal. And I use this ramp signal here, as you can see the modulation to um, use it for the playhead and then scan through the whole sample. And then use the audio output of that and go into the detec detector here, detect everything and so on. So if you don't want to use an AD, you can exchange this for maybe an LFO or um, a clock, or you can try to make it faster or slower. Um, if you make it faster, you probably have to tweak here the transient detector a bit with the force setting and delay setting because the timing changes. 
I made it here a bit slow so you get what's happening, uh, but you can probably optimize this to do the scan process much faster. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, yeah, and the rest is basically um, not that hard to get. Here's basically the slice play trigger where you use the keyboard to trigger the slices, or you can just click this button here to trigger the current slice. You can change the slice here, or you switch the keys mode on, and then you can use the keyboard. And it also works pretty fast, actually. So it's not, not like you have to play slow or something like that. Um, I needed to insert here kind of a delay of 30 milliseconds. You can also play around with slower settings. Um, but the, the sampler kind of needs a bit of time to uh, switch to the right positions inside of the sampler. If you put this down to zero, sometimes it you know, you, you don't trigger the right sample. So you yeah, have to have a, some kind of trigger delay here to, yeah, yeah, basically have more time to select the right slice. So um, that's that. As I said, you can download this on my Patreon page and go into that and play around with this and have some experimentations with that. I, in my opinion, it works really great, actually, for just being a simple a simple um, grid patch. Um, so I hope Bitwig includes something like that into the sampler natively, um, just so, so we can push a button, detect the slices or the onsets or whatever. I mean, they have the technology already in place on the audio track, so why not include it into the sampler and just map everything out onto the keyboard so people can just trigger these samples on the fly. Okay. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Link is in the description below. Um, leave a like if you liked the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel. Super important. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.